You're such an asshole. Hey everybody, my name's Aaron Clare. I run a company called uh, Asshole Consulting, and I too am a blogger, podcaster, YouTuber, micro-internet celebrity, and I had a request, but then I also have a good buddy uh, getting into this world uh, quite accidentally, and so he's been asking me a bunch of different individual questions. I say, you know what, let me just put together a complete video on how to make money as either a podcaster, a YouTuber, or a blogger, because it would not only be of benefit to him and the client that I had at Asshole Consulting, but anyone out there that might be interested. So I have taken a lot of notes <clears throat> putting this stuff together, and uh, I'm trying to be as thorough as possible, but not so lengthy that you'll tune out. But this is literally how to, how to make money. There's no guarantees, of course. You may not become the next PewDiePie or the next Jenna Marbles, uh, but this is how a regular schlep, if you're like me, can actually make it. All right. <clears throat> <clears throat> we can talk about all the details and YouTube and AdSense and all this other stuff. But it really helps to understand what is going on with social media, with YouTube, uh, uh, podcasting and all that. And if you understand that, then you'll understand the overall context in which this revolution is happening and you'll be able to figure it out for yourself. Rather than me telling you individual like, major in, in cal or go study calculus, why? So you can major in engineering, why? I'd rather t explain to you why engineers are in demand. So you're like, oh, you get the top down bird's eye view of what's happening. And what's happening is a revolution in media and it, it's nothing more than a simple replacement of the three traditional forms of media. We used to have newspapers, then radio and then television came along and these are being replaced and already have been replaced as bandwidth has gotten cheaper and, and, and larger with blogs, podcasting, and YouTube. And that's all it is, right? Except instead of a <clears throat> large corporation having the printing presses, the radio stations, and the television stations, the internet has made it that individuals like you and me can be our own newspapers, blogs, our own radio shows, uh, blo uh, podcasters, and our own television uh, personalities, television shows, which is YouTube. Right? So the, the model doesn't really change. You're, you, you're going to make money as uh, radio, television, and newspapers make their money. You're going to sell ads. So you're going to create content. You then sell advertisements. And there's different things. You could take ads from individual people. <clears throat> there's Google AdSense, YouTube. I'm sure many of you noticed already there's ads built in. Uh, so that's all you're really doing is you're taking this platform, either written, audio, or video, and you're adding ads to it, and you're going to collect some of the ads there. Now, a couple things are slightly different about this new wave of online media. One, there is no overhead, and this is where you can make money. I'll tell you a very interesting story. Um, I used to have a radio show for like 30 seconds uh, <coughs> over at uh, AM 15. It was the talk station, then they went all the sports. They laid off all these uh, talk show hosts and all these radio personalities. And, oh, it's sports! Sports all the time! Sports! Jim threw the ball to Bob! Bob cut the ball! Oh my god! Well, let's analyze that! So you could see <laughs> the IQ went down. Well, everyone was worried, oh my gosh, all these people got laid off. They're now making more money as podcasters because you get rid of the largest middleman ever. You get rid of the radio station, the newspaper, or the television station. I mean, drive past any news uh, station, any, any radio show, radio tower, any news network, t go to their headquarters, go to the building, <clears throat> and look at that facility. What do you see? Well, you see a lot of expensive equipment and gear. Radio towers are really expensive. They cost a lot of money to build, and they consume a lot of electricity. To shoot 50,000 watts, uh, it's a little bit more than what your little laptop and your little microphone consume there, and you can broadcast over the internet. All right? So there's this huge, outdated, obsolete technology where these buildings and staff, my gosh, right there, you got to have salespeople, you have to have HR people to ask people stupid questions, you got to have lawyers. You don't have that now. We got the internet. You grab this phone, not, not phone, you grab this little camcorder you got there, you hit the record button, blah, 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 blah. You upload it, boom, you're your own TV show. There's no government regulation, there's no HR department, there's no middle management, there's no shareholders, there's no electric bill, there's no radio tower, there's no television tower, there's no buying network, there's no paying for cable, there's nothing. The internet has replaced it all for essentially free. So as long as you got a computer, maybe a, so, uh, 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 <clears throat> a camcorder, and a microphone, you are good to go for, what, $500. You've replaced multi-hundreds of millions of dollars worth of equipment. So this is where, you know, 
I've said it before, after Rush Limbaugh and Sean Hannity and Ed Schultz and Joe Souchere and all these guys die, they won't have replacements because it's just too expensive. Everything is going to be on the internet, right? So <clears throat> that means more money for you. You don't have to pay this. You are selling directly to the customer, right? You are selling directly to your customers and your customers who? Anyone who can access the internet. It's not the range of the radio waves. It's not the cable network. You can access what? The six billion out of the seven billion people that have um, uh, the internet? Uh, truth is, the, the only real limit is not just necessarily, it's not internet access. The real limit is language. Uh, you know, Chinese and English are the two larger ones. Spanish, I think, is up there. But that's really it. So it's your, your actual language that you have. And they even have language like they could translate and all that. But <clears throat> so your reach is truly global. You are no longer limited to the broadcasting power of a television or radio station or a cable network. So you have a much larger audience. Now, another problem. If it's so cheap for the level of entry, the barrier to entry is so low, anyone can do it and anyone is doing it. I got you. Oh my God, I want to become a podcaster. I want to, it's like, oh, do you now? That's very interesting. All right. So does everybody else. I remember this friend of mine, she had a 16 year old uh, daughter. She wants to get into podcasting. I'm like, oh, yeah, like, cause screw engineering or becoming an accountant or a surgeon. She'll just become a podcaster, right? Well, she's very, she's very witty. She's very, oh, I'm, I'm sure she is. I'm sure she is, but have her study calculus anyway, all right? Uh, anyone can do it. You and your puppy dog can do it. And people do do puppy dogs and they make millions of dollars. Look at the cute dog. Oh, my God, like, give me the money. So there's a lot more competition for a lot more audiences. Now, what this does, you think, oh, well, well does that mean... I'm not going to make as much money. No, you're still going to make more money than the average disc jockey uh, or the average television. Well, maybe not the average. Yeah, well, actually, you probably would make more than the average, but like your news anchors, those guys actually make pretty... There's this guy called Paul Majors. Look him up. He's, uh, he used to be the big wig in the Twin Cities. And then they pulled him out to Los Angeles because he, he had the hair and he was Paul Majors and he was just a good-looking fellow. And Okay, those guys make the big bucks. But in all honesty, you will make way more than the average radio, television personality or worker, all right? Uh, but <clears throat> the market's gonna be different. It's much more, they've used the word democracy, I like to use the word niche, because that's what it is. I, I don't listen to talk radio anymore, you wanna what? Too bland. If I wanna get my geek on, I download, I download the Chris Beckloff podcast. If I wanna get my computer knowledge up, I go to Eli the computer guy. If I wanna <clears throat> learn about black culture, I go to O'Shea Jackson. Uh, if I want to learn about, I'm trying to think uh, other things, uh, British history, I go to the English history podcast, not the one of the guy who does, not the British history podcast, that guy's out in Portland and starts getting too theatrical for my teeth, very schmaltzy. The larger point is you can find anything, narrow down to your, you want to find only blue haired uh, anime character fan club discussion board. There probably is a podcast or a discussion board out there just for blue-haired anime characters. All right? So you can really tailor your interests to the niche that you want. And so you may not have the largest audience or the broadest audience, but you will have a very, very narrow and topic-specific audience. Now you say, well, that's, oh my gosh, you only have 10,000 followers. That's a good thing. Let me explain why. A niched office, uh, 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 not office, a niche market, a narrow market is a very loyal market. Because right now, if I were to go, let's say I take my, my book, let's just go back 20 years ago. I take one of my books called Worthless, Young Person's Indispensable Guys at Choosing the Right Major. Where would I run that advertising? Well, chances are I would run it on a conservative news network. All right, That would get exposure to people who are not leftists. Is that really my niche audience? Most people who are conservatives are older. They've already been to college. They're fuddy-duddy guys. Uh, they don't really have a, but they might have a daughter or a son that's going to go to college. They want to make sure that that kid doesn't major in the wrong subject. So we're talking, what, 1 out of 20, 1 out of 30? Well, that's back in the olden days. Now, with the internet and blogs and podcasts and YouTube channels, you can find, you know, thecollegefix.com. Um, collegeinsurrection.com, 
uh, what is it? Pri not Prison Planet. There's one like where school is prison or something. There's YouTubes and channels and blogs and podcasts that are dedicated solely, not just to higher education, but the education bubble. So you can find very tailored, very interested, and very prone to buy your product, prone to listen to you, type of audiences and, and potential customers and clients uh, by having a niche uh, market. So that means it is whatever niche you want to talk about, whatever it is your particular type, that is, that's good because you may not have a million listeners, but that's all right. You don't need it because your goal is to sell crap and make money. And I'd rather have 10,000 very loyal listeners and followers where 90% of them will buy it than have a million listeners and followers and have 0.0001% buy it because there's just not that many people who are going to be that compelled uh, or within that niche market that I'm trying to advertise to. Now, this leads to what I do believe is the most important rule that you should follow if you want to become a podcaster, a blogger, or a YouTuber. And that is be yourself. Let me explain the concept of personality, not, not in a social sense, but radio personality. He is a television personality. Uh, we just take that term for what it is and we just move on. But I want you to really think about that term. It means something. And back in the olden days, what it meant is that this person had a personality that people liked. If you listen to talk radio, television, or whatever else, take example Rush Limbaugh, or, or any talk person, let's just take Rush Limbaugh. People don't tune in for the calls. People do not tune into the Rush Limbaugh program or the Stephen Molyneux show because they want to hear the callers. They want to hear Rush Limbaugh. Why? Because he has an interesting personality. That's why. A lot of women liked Oprah. Do you think women really care? Well, maybe they did care a little bit about who they had on as a guest because Oprah did have people who were of interest to, to people. That was kind of her, sh her shtick. But the, it was through the lens and the interviewing through the eyes of Oprah that women really liked the show. Women really liked Oprah's personality. And I cannot emphasize that enough because here's the thing. Most of you are doing this for something to be fun or on the side and ideally the perfect world, this would be something you'd be doing full time. You wouldn't have to have a job. Well, here's my question to you. Do you want a job where you can be yourself all the time and get paid for it? Or do you want to put on an act up front Win over people that have fallen in love, not in love, but find interest in your fake persona that you just put up, put up, and then you have to keep that up the entire time. All right, which sounds easier, and which are you going to be able to do longer? Because I'm very crass on the internet. <clears throat> I'm kind of cleaning it up for this video. But if you watch any of my other videos, I run a company called Asshole Consulting. I'm not joking. I get to be myself. I get to be a rank asshole. I get to curse and swear and rip people apart and tell them the truth and have zero fucks to give if I insult them. Go watch any of my videos. I'm much more angry. And it's great. I get paid to be me. I get paid to be my natural asshole self. Now, could you imagine with my personality, if I had to be nice, if I had to sit there with the stupid, happy smile on my face, like, yes, little Jimmy, I'll get that guy. I'd be like, oh. So be yourself. Make it easier on yourself. Just be yourself. And what's great about it, it's just like making friends. You don't want to act like anybody else because you want to be yourself because you want to find friends who like you for you. And it's the same thing with your audience. Be yourself because then you'll find audience members who like you for you. They understand who you are. They associate with you. They understand your eccentricities. They get your jokes. Uh, and then they are additionally more prone to buy things that you like or recommend or refer or advertise on your different social media platforms. So that, that really is the number one thing is be yourself. And you know what? <clears throat> Just like college or high school, not college, high school, middle school, you're not, you may not be the most popular person. That's fine. I mean, Jenna Jameson is very popular. PewDiePie is very popular. Um, and we'll go into reasons why that is later. <clears throat> but uh, I, you, I, I couldn't act like, well, okay, I don't look like Jenna Jameson either, but I couldn't act like PewDiePie. I couldn't, and over time, you're going to make enough money. You'll find enough followers and family and friends, you know, the, your internet family, uh, that all of a sudden you will have a critical mass of people that you can live off of the advertising revenue that you generate from this loyal fan base. All right? So uh, unless, unless you're really in it for the money, I know a couple of people are in and, and they'll fake it. They'll put on the fake profile because it's just more popular and they'll get more. And, and that's fine. But to me, that's kind of taxing. 
So I, I, I'd leave it up to you, but that's something to really consider. All right, hey, once you go down this road and act like this personality, you know, do you want to keep that up? Or would you rather be yourself? And it, yeah, it may take five to ten years, but in, in ten years, you have yourself a loyal fan base and enough money that you could feasibly retire off of doing what is really a hobby, just being yourself. So that that's something there. That, all right. So I have that. <clears throat> now, the next thing. Uh, let's look at the different formats that you can use. All right, there are three main ones. They parallel newspaper, radio, and television. You have blogs, and that could be WordPress. It could be Blogger, or you can go and get your own URL and, and get a format or a template that allows for blogging. Just go to WordPress.com or Blogger.com, sign up. I, I don't have a preference one over the other. I would prefer maybe WordPress because YouTube, which is owned by Google, is a little, or not YouTube, Blogger, which is owned by Google. I, I just would like to diversify out of the Google, YouTube, Facebook matrix. It's just kind of... Uh, I, you know, they can just pull the plug, and if you're completely dependent on Google, you're screwed. So I would be diversifying your social media outside of these these major ones. So there's that. <clears throat> Podcasting, um, you could you could just record your podcast MP3 format. You know, get yourself. Uh, I prefer Gold Wave. Other people prefer Audacity. It's up to you. Doesn't matter. It's, it's whatever your cup of tea is. But who you have to host your podcast? Where you save your pot? You're gonna need a podcast host. So you could go to SoundCloud.com. That's very popular, but it looks like they might be having some financial trouble, so I don't know if they'll be around. Do not do Podomatic. I hate Podomatic. They, um, they're, they're just not reliable. Their service sucks, and they just suck. And there's Libsyn. There's what else? Blurberry. There's a lot of hosts out there that will put together and host your, um, that offer podcasting services, podcast hosting services. Um, if you are controversial like me, you may want to look at uh, who you're using. I, someone informed me that SoundCloud is all social justice warriory, and if they ever listen to my podcast, they probably get pissed off. I, I didn't violate any of their terms or contracts, but it doesn't matter because a lot of these network or IT uh, uh, social media companies are heavily biased to the left. So if you're on the, the right leaning side of politics, you got to worry about them pulling the plug and shutting you down. So again, I would be diversifying outside of the Google, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter oligopoly. Uh, so that if one goes down, like I have a backup Daily Motion account, so if Google decides to like, we don't like what he's saying no more, even though none of them work in the South, uh, I have Daily Motion, I could continue on. So it, it's stuff like that. Uh, but with a podcast, one thing I will recommend, read Viral Podcasting by Kerry Lutz. He is much more of an expert on it than I am. Um, he will tell you like which podcasting services to get in his book. Um, but the larger point is to get a podcasting service, you need an RSS feed. That is the very most important thing. Because what a lot of, if not all of these podcasting services will do is they'll provide you a link and it goes to their site. So they get traffic. Whereas most people just want to download the goddamn podcast and listen to it. They don't want to listen to it online. They want to download it. And that's what an RSS feed is for. So make sure, and most of them are allowing for this, that when you get a podcasting host, Libsense, Blurberry, whoever, um, you get the RSS feed and you use that to tell your audience that, that you know, the, here, here's the MP3. I always provide the link, then the direct MP3 link, and then the link to the RSS feed. Maybe a little bit more information you want to know, but you can revisit this later. All right? uh, and then YouTube, um, that, you need a camcorder and a YouTube account. That's about it. Uh, they allow for automatic monetization. I think they're still on the thing where there's a 15 minute lim limit until you garner enough followers. So go on Facebook, go tell family, friends, say, please subscribe, please like. Even set up fake accounts that you got to go, although it may take a while, uh, but you got to you gotta get enough followers and subscribers that then they allow you to have like as long as a podcast you want. Now, YouTube, political differences aside, is very good because they also allow for live streaming, <clears throat> which in addition to videos, it's like doing live television. You announce to people, hey, we're going to do this live stream. So it's like live television. It's not a rerun. People can watch on YouTube. They can even send you questions so you can have like a show like Dave Ramsey does or Chris Beckloff does. And uh, it's, it's a little bit added versatility, a little bit of uh, I think. And then they run ads. You don't even have to. You just click monetization. Your, your account would be qualified for monetization. You just click monetize on each video you want monetized. And they run the ads for you. So YouTube is very slick in that regard. All right? The thing, though, with all three, especially though, uh, well, let, let me tell you this for all three. All three 
you're going to have to want to do this out of passion. And I would say definitely with podcasting, maybe even YouTube, that's therapy. Uh, I know more than one podcaster who uses podcasting as just like late at night. They don't want to talk to a therapist because they don't believe in therapists. They just want to talk to somebody because <laughs> the people in their regular lives are so fucking boring and average. They just need to talk to someone intelligent. So they talk to the they talk to nothingness. A lot of, a lot of intelligent people on late at night just talking to nothing. Uh, you just have to want to be able to do it without getting paid. So that's one thing to consider uh, when it comes to podcasting and YouTube. The other thing, especially with podcasting and YouTube, there's a fair amount, not a fair, but some capital investment involved. You're going to need a good quality. I got a Yeti mic right here. I recommend those. Get the most updated version. There's been some mm, problems with Windows 7. So get a Yeti mic. Just, just drop the good money on a mic up front. Don't do the fucking slow upgrade and spend three times the amount of money on that you didn't really get to good get good gear. Get good gear. Even I got to upgrade this camera. The camera's not that great, but it, it suffices for now. Buy the good gear up front. Get yourself like a 32 meg SD card. Get it so you have a good operator and you don't have to ever go back to Best Buy or my Amazon affiliate program, which you should do. Go to Captain Capitalism. Here, I'm going to demonstrate. Go to CaptainCapitalism.blogspot.com, click on the Amazon banner, and buy all your gear there. See how that works? That's how you make money. There's a little bit real live, real live how to hustle and make money on the interwebs. Uh, but I would go and buy good gear up front. Don't fuck with it. I mean, just get it good. That That's it, and you, you, you'll be done with that. So that's those are the three formats. Now, there are other, there's Daily Motion and all that, but the your three main ones are Blogger, Podcast, that's... You can use whatever podcasting host. And then YouTube, although I would set up a daily motion or a Vimeo account in case YouTube decides to get lippy. All right? And, and that can happen. All right. Second thing, monetization. This pisses me off because I've seen some, some guys out there and gals, they got great traffic, even better traffic than me, and they don't monetize. They, they have, they've done all the work. All this water rushing underneath the bridge, and all they gotta do is dip a fishing pole in it, and they're too lazy to do that because they don't know how. So you you need to create this fishing net to lower into this rushing water of traffic to pull up some fish. <clears throat> so you gotta sew yourself a net. Right, now this depends on what formats you're using. Okay, uh, I'm I'm a triple threat. I do podcasting, blogging, and YouTube. All right, and so I have monetized all their account, but. <clears throat> Before we get into the main ways you're going to monetize each of those formats, first thing you do, even before you log in, get a blog or a website or a podcast or anything, even for the first thing you do after you're done watching this, you get a fucking PayPal account. Not Patreon, not GoFundMe, you get a PayPal account. Okay? And then that way, you allow people to pay you. Because the number one thing, like if you don't have it easy for people to pay you, they won't. You say, well, pay me by check, mail me cash. They're not going to do it. The easiest way, even though it costs 3% of all your transactions, unlike Patreon, which is 10%, it's 3%. Get a fucking PayPal account. Put the little logo up there on your site. Put the links on everything you publish and post out there. Boom, you're done. And now you have allowed. It's like getting the credit card machine at the uh, physical place of business. You need that. Don't do this cash stuff. Don't do this, well, oh, you don't like to pay Visa. Get PayPal. They take credit cards. They take other PayPal. They take other forms. Just just get that. All right? That's the first thing you do. Now, right, now, how do you monetize it? We got blog, right? Blog, if you're on YouTube, or YouTube, if you're on Google Blogger, <coughs> you can do Google's AdSense. All right? That's one way to automatically monetize it. You can do Amazon Affiliate. That's another main one you're going to want to do. Those are like your two main ones. Whatever Google's offering, Google AdWords, Google AdSense, and then Amazon Affiliate. Those are the two ones. There are other affiliate programs out there. I don't know if you ever heard people running ads for Stamps.com or LegalZoom. Every company, not every company, most companies out there know that advertising is done on the Internet now, and they have these affiliate plans. All right? Like I have one of my affiliates is Betterment. Betterment didn't call me up. I'm like, I like Betterment. A lot of my stuff is about finance and investing. Uh, so I'm going to go to Betterment and see if they have a, an affiliate program. They did. So I log in. I provide my information. I give them a bank account number so they go ahead and they know where to direct deposit. Wait, is it or do I do PayPal? 
well, either way, I get PayPal. It goes to my account, and they give me a little code. I copy that, and I paste that on my blog. Or I can get a link, a trackable link, so they know, ah, this came from Cappy. So when someone buys or makes a deposit, they set up an account with Betterment, I get a cut. I get my commission. Right? So you can, depend. like let's say you do a fashion blog. I'm sure Nordstrom's has an, Amazon, or has an affiliate program. I'm sure Macy's has an affiliate program. I'm sure makeup companies, if you're the female persuasion, uh, they have affiliate programs. Estee Lauder or L'Oreal, whatever. I'm, I'm sure whatever company that would have an interest in your micro niche of, of clients, of your particular blog or podcast, there is an affiliate program out there. So you go look that up, you grab it, and you put these ads on the sidebars of your blog. And depending on your layout, you can choose a layout for your blog or your WordPress. It'll be obvious where to put that in. And if you're not that good with technology, go contact some kid. You can contact me at Asshole Consulting. I'll do it for you at an egregious price, but I'll do it for you. <clears throat> but usually there are tutorials on the internet that you could. There are other podcasters and bloggers whose specialty is telling you how to do Amazon, or not Amazon, affiliate marketing. So you have that there. So we have other affiliate plans. And then there are individual advertisers. Uh, people, I always say, hey, $100 a month, you can advertise on my network, on my media, I my podcast, my YouTube, and my blog. And people say, yeah, I want it. And so then I do podcast spots for them. I do a video for them. And then I run ads on the side, uh, on my sidebars over at my blog. I say, give me an image, give me a link, and then you give me my $100 at my PayPal account. All right there, all online. can all be done in 10 minutes if you get streamlined enough. And bada boom, bada big, chumma chumma, we're off to the races. I got my money and their ads up and running. So there may be people that reach out to you if, you're, if your blogs and YouTubes and everything get a high enough traffic. Um, they'll contact you and say, hey, we'd like to run ads. Do you have something that costs us? And you say, yeah, yeah, that's 100 bucks, 50 bucks, whatever it is. Uh, so there's that. Now, podcasting is no different than radio. You're going to have your sponsors. Uh, the problem is it's, it's audio. It's an MP3 file. So the only way you're going to be able to tell people about your sponsors is verbally, just like radio. Now, in, when you post your podcast up on an internet site, your RSS feed, you could put, you know, so our sponsors provide a link. That, that'll help. <clears throat> but I always do, just like a radio, they have spots for ads. I do spots for ads on my podcast. So I mention academiccomposition.com. I mention, oh, who else? We have Elkin CPA. We got a CPA who is a sponsor. These are individuals who have reached out to me and say, hey, we'd like to sponsor the show. Then I mention my affiliate ones. that They don't even know who I am. They just have it available for free. You can download it. And I say, I got my Betterment uh, uh, affiliate program. I have my Amazon affiliate program. I have my Audible affiliate program. And I tell them where to go on, on the podcast, but then I also provide links down below in the description to the podcast. And then YouTube... Same thing, you can, um, well, there's monetization. Obviously, you just click monetize, and YouTube will naturally run those annoying ads at the bottom of the screen. Probably has happened to this uh, uh, video as well. But just like television or radio, say, here's our sponsor, da da da. At the end of this video, I'll tell you where to go and get all my stuff. Go to my Amazon link, da 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 da, because that's plugging. That's all it is. So you do it at the end. Try not to make it too annoying to the listeners. Um, but it's no different than, um, than doing. Your podcast is the same, except you're you're doing it on video. So uh, there's that there. Um, that. All right. Next thing, content. A any content goes. Anything goes. And like I said before, do what you want to do. Okay. Be your own self. So if you want to talk about fishing, do a fishing podcast. You want to talk about nursing, do a nursing podcast. But there are what do I come up with seven general themes or. or types of content that people come up with, all right? The first one is cute girl with big tits. And I am terribly sorry, I don't mean to be crass, but it's 100% true. If you are a cute girl with big tits, <laughs> you don't even have to have big, you just have to be a cute girl, you have the number one commodity in the world, more valuable than oil, more valuable than money, and that's a cute girl with big tits. You have beauty, right? Half the population, they're called men, they want that. And you can look up Laura Southern, one girl, I, I'm just like, oh my God, give me a break. Millennial Millie. I've seen this firsthand very prominently uh, being a not leftist, being a libertarian conservative type. 
where all the heavy lifting, all the deep economic philosophical research and, and, and thought is done by the economists, the Thomas Sowells, the Peter Schiffs, myself, and we put together a bunch of numbers and that. And then along comes this girl who just graduated last week. <laughs> oh my goodness, I like Republicans. I like capitalism and Ronald Reagan. <laughs> And they had, I calculated at one time, like a 500% premium. Like, you could take a guy who did all the work in heavy lifting and comes up with these great analysis, and you could have a girl who doesn't know what she's talking about, simply re repeat it, juggle her tits in front of the internet, it's Millennial Millie, look her up, and they will get five times the amount of subscribers. This is not fair, this is not right, this is not, I don't care, it is what it is. But my point is, for any young, good-looking girls out there, if you want to capitalize on the fact that half the population wants to sleep with you, and this is, aside from gravity and thermal dynamics, I think the strongest force in the universe, go become an internet personality. I'm not saying you have to do porn. It doesn't have to be anything like that. But take a look at Jenna Marbles. She ain't ugly. Right? She's, she's quite a comely lass. <laughs> capitalize on that. I got all these girls who are friends of mine. Smart, too. It's really sad. Like, they're beautiful and they're smart. And I'm like, why don't you just look? I even know one who is an economist. I'm like, why don't you just, you don't have to be slutty. Just be pretty like the girls on Fox News. I mean, they're up there for a reason. And it ain't because they're great at uh, analytics. But you are smart. You can do this. Go just make some things about economics and observations. And you'll have, oh, yeah, I know that. So for you ladies who are young and pretty, <clears throat> this is kind of almost a no-brainer, I'd say, for you. Especially if you have the intelligence or the originality to come up with something like programming, anything that isn't female dominated. There's already, the, the female world is already dominated makeup, fashion blogs, stuff like that. But if you can't, you know, hang out with the guys, a little rough and tumble, a little, you know, locker room talk and punch each other in the shoulder, and you just want to put together some cool guy stuff, you know, you're a tomboy, be happy to be pretty. Really, you can make a lot of money with very little effort relative to someone who, who just isn't a millennial millie. Right? So that's that's one. And I want to point that out first to the young ladies out there. I know a lot of people have student loans. You're younger, like, how do you make a lot of money? How do you do it without going to a strip club? Here's how, okay? You, 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 if you're smart and you're pretty, YouTube is your oyster, man. I, you, you, there's nothing I, I can't just go and do. <clears throat> Second thing is a specialist, where you are a specialist in a particular field and people are coming to you for wisdom in that field. Uh, one example would be Eli the computer guy. His name is Eli, and I don't know if you knew this, he does computers. So if you want to know something about computers, YouTube, Eli, computer guy, and then RAM, or whatever else, Dell, uh, whatever you want to find out. Chances are Eli the computer guy has something on there for him. All right? Next one, um, this is where it's just, uh, uh, he's a character or personality. Somebody that you really like. It would be like Bill Burr. Bill Burr, is, he's a comedian. Uh, that's his daytime job. But he, is, he, he doesn't go on uh, podcasting for anything in particular except to talk about his day. But he's a very interesting fellow, so, and he's funny on top of it. So we just, a lot of people just tune into him. Because you don't want to listen to politics all day. You don't want to listen to work all day. You don't want to listen to the the Economist podcast starring Economist Economist Sisson. You know, you want to you want to break from that. Right? Uh, another guy, O'Shea Jackson. If you guys haven't watched this guy's YouTube channel, go check him out. <laughs> He's just he, he he has he talks about young black men and issues that they face. But the dude has a personal delivery that is funnier than hell. And even though you may not be a young black gentleman, it it's still worth listening to because of the entertainment value. So those are like the, the personality again. It gets back to the personality and humor, isn't it? Then you have freak shows. This is where you may disagree with these people. Some of them are outright disgusting psychopaths. Like you're like, holy cow. But it's just the shock value. Um, this is like the amazing atheist uh, movie Bob. Look at these guys. And they got way more followers than I do because they're freak shows. And so it, it's, it's kind of sad. You wonder how many people actually tune into these people because they like them versus how many people are like, my God, I want to see how, how, how deep is the abyss? How far does the rabbit hole go? Uh, I don't know if you personally would want to become that because it, it, you prostrate yourself out in front of people. You're, you're like a freak show. It's kind of somewhat degrading. 
Uh, but it's a way to make money. It's a really good way to make money if you don't mind degrading yourself in front of millions of people because F you, I got mine. Uh, you know, it, it, people you say, hey, would you run around naked for $10 million? Damn right. There, if someone offered me $10 million, I'd be running around naked and uh, I don't care because F you, I got mine. <laughs> so, <laughs> now watch. So I'll give you $10 million. It's like, yeah, when, when the check clears, pal. When the check clears. So, uh, we got that. Then there's cute puppy dog shit. This is, it's simple, it's, you just film your cute little puppies. Little kids love it, you get little, little infant toddler type kid, puppies, uh, babies, all the girls, did, oh my god, little children tune in, and hey, it's, it's the Furry Frank show with Furry Frank, and you got the dog, and you put a sweatshirt on, Furry Frank has no clue what's going on, he's just happy he's got his Alpo. Uh, meanwhile, you make you got two million followers on YouTube, so just playing to the the base instinct cute factor, puppy dogs, little children, what else? You know, Hermie the hamster. Oh my God, look at Hermie! He's running on his little thing. Oh hey, and you may think that's stupid, but millions of people think that's great. Cats, you know, remember cat pictures on the internet quite some time, a decade ago, people were like, you know, there's a cat hanging out on a clothesline. Hang in there. How many times did that get forwarded? Didn't cure cancer, but it got a lot more play than, than any one of my videos. So it's, you know, I've often thought about doing that myself. I just like go find somebody's puppy. Hey, can I film your puppy, uh, puppy once a day? And they're like, yeah, I'm like, okay, hey, it's, it's the cuddly uh, gym show. Oh, it's cuddly Jim, the little puppy. Give me millions of dollars. Thank you. So there's that. Um, then we have how to, and this is more instructional, tutorial, educational. So Dave Ramsey is kind of one, although he's he's got a show, but he'll, some of his stuff will end up on YouTube. Uh, but a lot of auto mechanic repairs, I use this a lot. I've taught myself how to be a mechanic on YouTube so I can fix up my motorcycles and my cars pretty well. And it was all on YouTube. There's a, a guy, I forget his name. He's really good though, but just, just some great, quick instructional video so that's what you could do you're like i got to put together some dance videos i used to be a dance instructor and i know this may shock you salsa dancing might be a little more popular than my economic analysis videos i know that may shock some of you but uh here's how you dance here's how you replace a carburetor here's how you fix a computer things that everyday people want to learn here's how you do some plumbing stuff like that the trades uh and so that's another content these are just categories Whatever works for you, however you make money, whatever niche you find, that's great. You don't need to fall in one of these. But just to give you an idea of kind of what sells, how much work you want to put into it. Do you want to go cute and base? Do you want to go more intellectual? Because um, I'll tell you this, the cute and base, like puppies, okay, maybe you sell some kids' clothing or something like that to the little kids that watch the puppy show. But you may not get that many loyal followers if you get like a really hardcore, deep economic podcast and you get people to buy silver and gold or betterment or whatever else. <coughs> okay. And there. All right. Now, you have laid your infrastructure down. You got your system down. You got your podcast or your blog or YouTube or a combination thereof or only one. Doesn't matter. It's whatever you want to do. You have the, the PayPal set up. You got your affiliate program set. Down the road, you'll get some advertised. The last thing you have to do is do it consistently and over time. I cannot emphasize enough how important this is. If you're going to do it like 85 to 90% of the people where, I want to become a podcaster, YouTuber, okay? And like I've had people, hey man, like kids in college, hey man, like I'm 23. And I'm like totally good with girls. And like I was I'm coming up with a blog. Like these dude bros hats on back. Hang on, let me do it. There we go. I'm coming up with a blog. I, I like as in a frat. And I, I wanna like show guys how to pick up girls, man, because I'm really good at it. And like, oh, okay, Chip Chipperson. Uh, how about you come back in a year when you've done one podcast every week and I see 52 episodes, I'll grant you 50, you take some time off, and you come up with a blog where I see like a post every day or like every other day you show me that you're consistent and then i'll run some ads on your show or i'll tell people about you all right and the vast majority of people never do that chippy chipperson uh he loses interest because he's a lazy douche bro uh, do bro frat boy i'll go back to being a normal guy now <clears throat> and you never hear from him again all right 
you need to be consistent. It doesn't have to be great material all the time, but there does have to be material there all the time. If you can't make content, I usually have someone come in and sub for me. Like right now, because of this backlog of work I have to do at Asshole Consulting, I have other people doing my podcast for the next two weeks. And that's fine. You got to take a break. You can't work all the time. That's fine. But it must be consistent. I got two guys who are great, great podcasters when they podcast together. And then they let their little internal bullshit break them up like a freaking 1970s rock band. And now both of them have done their own podcast and they get around to it whenever. I don't tune into them anymore. I don't even link to them anymore because I'm not going to tell my audience, hey, tune in to the so-and-so show. Uh, and then like the same podcast that was there a month ago is still there and that's the most recent one. You got to do a podcast every week. And for blogs, you have to have content every other day, I'd almost say. Weekends you take off, uh, but you have to have content there almost. Even if it is just a link to something else. Preferably not, preferably original and well thought out quality material. But I cannot emphasize how important, the number one thing, okay, the number two thing, number one thing I said is be yourself, be the personality you want to be. Right behind there, I mean like barely, just edged out for the silver medal, or for the gold medal, is consistency. You must produce content consistently. And you must do it over time. It took me about six to seven years to get a large enough audience through blogging that I had a large enough audience that I could start making enough money off of it that I never had to work again. Or a real job during that. I still work. I still produce a lot of stuff. <clears throat> but I, uh, it took that long. Now, some people are great. Some people are, well, some people, okay. <laughs> you take a look at these cute, cutesy girls Hee <laughs> hee, I like Sean Hannity. Go Trump. They go in a month to get 30,000 viewers like I do on my YouTube. By the way, subscribe, like, and comment below if you, if you would kindly do me that favor. That While you watch, just, just hit the like button. That'd be nice. It helps with the algorithms on YouTube, and then it shows on other places. That's why they do that. That's why everyone keeps hounding you for likes. It's not because you're like, I don't understand. Is it from, it's not from vanity. It tells the algorithms at Google and YouTube and Facebook, like, show this to more people. It's trending. It's getting popular. Anyway, if you're a cute girl, this is why I recommended it to you, cute girls. You will cover that. I've seen them cover it in a month or two. So it took me three years on YouTube, eight years on blog. A cute girl can get desperate thirsty men to like them and get them up to that level in about one to two months. A really good star, I, I keep bringing him up. People say, dude, what are you doing? Like, O'Shea Jackson pay No, he didn't pay me, he's that good. O'Shea Jackson, he is that good and that unique and he's selling that good of a product uh, that in three months, he went from zero to 30,000. The dude is going three, four, four times. He is going 12 times faster than I am. Because sometimes you just hit it. Your niche is your niche. And there's a market out there that no one's addressing. And man, he hit oil. He hit gold. And that's great. That's what you want to do. But that ain't, you can't just do it. Heck, most people don't even go a month. You got to do it every day for sometimes years to build up your audience. All right? So it's consistency and it is over time. <clears throat> uh, let me consult my other notes. Oh, oh. All right, so you do that. Now, you can also grow your audience by trying to market and advertise to other bloggers and podcasters. I, ha I don't recommend this. Um, and I've, this year, 2017, I'm stopping it because I've had such bad luck. And the reason why is most podcasters and YouTubers and, and, and uh, bloggers are horrible businessmen and businesswomen. They're just horrible. I've gone to, I've had, more than one, I think, yeah, two for sure, I know, two for sure, were complaining about not having money. These are prominent podcasters and YouTubers. People have at least double my followership and viewership begging for money. And I'm like, well, you, I'm not going to mention who they are, you two guys, they were men, <coughs> are exactly in my demographic. My audience, or, or your audiences would buy my books, even come to my side and listen to what I have to say, I will pay you, you, are, you need money. I will pay you advertising dollars to run ads on your show for my products and my show. All right? And I never heard back from them. To, to be honest, here, and I have the list of the four people. Now, I've contacted hundreds, all right? We're talking, we're talking less than 2% here, guys. This is how bad it is. So just be prepared, all right? I've contacted hundreds of different podcasters, YouTubers, bloggers, 
People had sizable audiences, people who had growing on just audiences that were very specific and would sell well to my audience. All right, or my products would sell well to their audience. You never hear back from. Here are the four people that got back to me. I want, you should write these people down, even though they may not be your niche. But Tom Likas at BlowMeUpTom.com. All right, those guys got their shit together. Those guys are professional. Again, I don't know, especially if you're female or selling female products with predominantly a male audience. I don't know what use he would be, but that's an example of a very professional, have their act together, being serious about marketing and advertising, as you should be when people contact you about running ads on your, your platforms, right? Chris Beckloff, he's on YouTube. He will get back to you. He is a professional, all right? Terrence Pop, he's also on YouTube, P-O-P-P. -P. He will get back to you. He's professional. And then Penn Gillette, and you guys know him, Penn and Teller, the magicians over in Vegas, they're on television, right? Penn Gillette has a podcast, and I can't afford his rates, unfortunately. Uh, but his staff did get back to me, and they got back to me promptly. And they had, here's the charts, here's the numbers, here's the data, this is how much it costs. It's like, wow, thank you so much, and I'm sorry, I can't afford it. Still, it's very rare to find people that have their act together and will get back to you in a timely fashion or at all. And because I've wasted so much time trying to find, like I'll go on Alexa, like there's the Google page rank, you'll find different ratings, like how big are these people's audiences? I'm like, oh, that's a good size audience. I'll contact them, see if they want it. You'll never hear back from them. So <clears throat> your time, until this changes, until people wake the F up and realize how much water is flowing underneath their bridge and they haven't put a net down into it yet, even though you're saying, Build a net! Here, I will give you money to build a net. Just give me a couple of the fish you get out of it. They won't do it. Uh, so until that time, your time is better spent producing quality material and content, be it a podcast, a YouTube, or, or a, a good article on a blog, than it is trying to go and expand your audience by advertising on other people's uh, platforms. So it's, it's just, I, I've not had good luck with that. All right, there's one final thing. <coughs> Do not quit your day job, okay? Do not. Uh, you would think this would be common sense. You would think like, oh, I'm, I, I, this is a hobby. This isn't a real job, even though after a while it will become a real job if you're good at it. Uh, you will say, I need to put food, clothing, and shelter on my family, just like George Bush said, so I should not give up my day job. This is a part-time thing that you pursue in your free time at some point in time down the road may grow enough that you can replace your daytime job and then you have the best job in the world. The problem is I know way too many people, especially, and this pisses me off, hypocrites in the advice world, the life coaching, let me give you advice type of world, even though I hate the term life coach, who are begging for money, do not live what they preach, and think that living off of this is, is like, oh, I got a blog and a podcast, so I just quit my job. And then they're, they are hand to mouth. These are the ones like, I need money. I like to advertise on your show. They're too damn stupid to take the advertising dollars. So you're like, screw you. I don't care if you go bankrupt. But they'll still provide advice on how to live your life and finances and all that. It angers the hell out of me, especially since I'm in the world of personal financial management, economics, investing, and stuff like that. Do not quit your day job. You are not, do not take pride in this. Okay, nothing wrong. I'm not saying don't be prideful, but not like, oh, I am a podcaster now. <laughs> no, you're a guy, you're a dipshit with, with a $100 microphone and a crappy used camera that you got from your parents, all right? With internet access. You haven't made any money yet. All right? So, and, and I, I know you guys are saying, well, who would do this? It's shocking what a high percentage of people would do this. Don't do that. You are not a professional podcaster or YouTuber or anything until you don't need your daytime job no more, right? And certainly do not tell people, well, let me give you some advice because uh, when you're begging people for money because you can't afford your insurance, your food, or your freaking gas, right? So work your daytime job. <clears throat> Be anonymous if you have to. I know some of you might have politically insensitive topics that might get you fired or laid off. If that's the case, don't do YouTube. Only do podcast or blog. Don't tell anyone you're doing it either. Don't put it up on your Facebook. Um, but do not uh, quit your daytime job. And only until you start making money do you quit your daytime job. And even then. Uh, one thing I didn't mean to get to, yeah, you know what? Let's do this now. Let's back up just one thing I forgot to add and then we'll, we'll go to the very, 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 very final thing. When you're producing content, 
okay? Let me explain where Facebook and Twitter and Gab.ai and Instachat and all these other um, social media platforms are. Blogger, YouTube, and podcasting, they are content producing platforms. They produce content. Facebook and Twitter and Gab and all these other social, Snapchat and all, well, not Snapchat, that's images and porn. Uh, all these other social media formats are used as press releases for the content that you produce. So you, you try and get Twitter followers and Facebook followers, and then you disseminate your, you know, you have a link for a blog post you made, or you have a link to the MP3. You use uh, Facebook and Twitter and gab.ai, minds.com, all those, and that's how you disseminate it. So I, I apologize that I, I skipped my notes. Now, the very, 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 very last one. What is the goal here? This is how to make money as a blogger, podcaster, and or YouTuber, all right? The goal is what I call the Rush Limbaugh heaven. All right? When I was in radio, I, I had a weekend, one time a week, Sunday afternoon, no one's listening, barely had maybe 500 people listening. And I always envied the likes of Rush Limbaugh or Bill O'Reilly or Sean Hannity or Glenn Beck. And it's not because they're on the right, but just you could maybe even say Rachel Maddow or Ed Schultz, but they weren't as big. They didn't have as big of an audience. And the reason I envied them is because let's say Rush Limbaugh decided, well, ladies and gentlemen, my friends, I need to go, you know, he just says, I, I need a yacht. And he doesn't have the convenient $50 million to buy this super yacht. What does Rush Limbaugh have to do? How could Rush Limbaugh get that $50 million in about a month? How could he get it? He, he'll, never, he'll never have financial troubles. You want to know why? Because all Rush Limbaugh had to do was write a book. And you damn well know out of his, what, 40 million listeners, 20 million would buy it. And especially self-published nowadays, he, he, he makes five, six dollars a book. That guy has got 80 million dollars, just like that. He doesn't even have to write it. You know, he could have a ghostwriter write it, and he can learn laser drum. I have here my formerly nicotine stained fingers. If any of you listen to the show. Uh, he has a bank. He's his own mint. So if you got large enough, if you got big enough, you don't even get Rush Limbaugh's size. But Bill O'Reilly's another perfect example. I just, okay, I got books. You know, I'm happy. I'm happy when, when PJ Media links to it, which is a huge accomplishment in the online world. I mean, and, and without Glenn Reynolds and, and Dr. Helen, I would not have the success that I do today. <clears throat> but Bill O'Reilly, because he has such a huge following and huge platform because he's on Fox News. He, he wrote the, I think it was Killing Lincoln. I think that was the latest book that he wrote of killing this. Do you know how many books he sold in one, the first day it, it came out, the first day he sold 600,000 copies. That's physical, not audio or Kindle. He sold 600,000 copies in one day. <laughs> and at even $3 Profit per book, uh, he, that's $1.8 million in a day. He may not have even read the damn book. Larger point is this. If you get a large enough following and audience, then you can actually start selling your own stuff. And typically, <clears throat> when you're doing podcasting, YouTubing, stuff like that, books are the product by which are conducive to selling to that platform. You're talking about ideas, concepts, things like that. You have a lawyer following. Hey, I'm coming out with a book on homeschooling. I'm coming out with a book on bass fishing. And you, again, you, ideally, you would have the 40 million, million listening uh, and followers that Rush Limbaugh has. But if you, even you got 10,000 who are loyally going to buy your book and you self-publish, well, you write your book on bass fishing, you have 10,000 people buy it. Self-publishing makes a lot more money than than going through Simon & Schuster, one of these old, decrepit, obsolete, you know, New York publishing houses. You go createspace.com, that's Amazon's uh, publishing arm. You uh, write your book, you self-publish, and you're going to make eight, maybe seven dollars per book, and 10,000 people buy it, that's 70 grand. And then you can write another book every two years or so. That's serious money. Now you're talking serious money. Right? And my books are... are, are quite that popular yet, but I make good, I make enough money, I can live off of the books I write. 
And so that's why I have Bachelor Pad Economics, Worthless, Enjoy the Decline, Curse of the High IQ, Reconnaissance Man, Black Man's Guide Out of Poverty. I wrote many books, and not everyone's going to buy every book, but most of my listeners or audience members have bought one of them. And as time goes on, I already have these assets that will continue to generate more money in the future as new, you gain new listeners and followers. So, whereas your previous net that you are dipping into the river of traffic to catch many dollar fish consists of Amazon affiliate, other affiliate programs, direct advertisements, etc., etc., even Walmart has an affiliate program. You want to have your own products, namely books, but if you're a musician, CDs and albums. <clears throat> Anything you could produce online through media that you could sell. Uh, comic books even, uh, well, Control Alt Delete, that's a comic book, um, Sinfest, uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, least I could do, These, they, they've come up with their own comic books and they sell them, you can make a lot of money by selling your own products and wares to your own audience. So if you get 10,000 followers and you do the monetization right, which nobody does, you actually are at the point you don't need uh, to have a job. You, you should have be able to generate enough money out of that between all the different types of advertising and monetization and your own products and books uh, that you probably, you know, you can make 30, maybe even 40 grand. Well, okay, well, you can make millions like Beauty Pew or Jenna Marbles. You have know, millions of followers, of course. Uh, but for us mere mortals, for those of you within the reach and grasp of our hands, what you can actually do, consistency over time, build up an audience, you got 10,000 people, now it's like a congregation for a church. And now if enough people tithe or buy your stuff or whatever, you can support the church and yourself as a, as a pastor or the, what is it called, ringmaster of your podcast, blog, and YouTube. So anyway, so that's it. I hope that helped out. I hope that kind of gave you a good tutorial on how to make money online as a podcast, a YouTuber, or a blogger. Uh, if you have any questions, <clears throat> I've been doing this for five years now. Well, I've been doing this more for 12, but without having a daytime job, I've been doing that for um, uh, five. But go to my consulting site, assholeconsulting.com. You can find my books at Amazon.com. I mentioned them before, but just look up Aaron Clary, A-A-R-O-N-C-L-A-R-E-Y. I have my podcast. That's called The Clary Podcast. It's very curse-full and angry and raging. Uh, you can find that on SalClaw.com. And then, oh, my blog, CaptainCapitalism.blogspot.com. You can read my angry writings and tirades there. Anyway, hope to see you guys out there. Hope this helped out a lot of you. Best of luck to all of you. Toodles.